He's a killing Missouri. I'm Reggie Bailey. Welcome to Books of Pop Culture. Killy, how you doing, What's up? brother? What's up? Hey, man, we making it, man. Something wrong with my neck. I, I think Trace might have karate chopped me in my sleep or something, but I'm, I'm surviving, man. I'm thriving and surviving uh, as a, uh, a card carrying member of the Faithful mm-hmm. Black Male Association, you know, as always. Hey, man, after. <laughs> After reading the trees, you know, you might, it might not have been trees, man. It might have been somebody else. Hey, might have been some, somebody's else. Might have been somebody's, somebody's else. Yes, <laughs> yes. I you like what, what you saying? did there. Hey, man, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to talk about, man. Sure before, we, before, we, before we get to talking about it, thank you to the fellowship. First time, last time listeners. First time, last time viewers. Everyone in between, all of you are appreciated because you could be anywhere in the world, but you are here with us. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, leave a like, comment, share that you're watching, turn on post notifications. If you're listening on your favorite podcast app, whether that's Stitcher, Apple, Google, Pocket Cast, Spotify, whatever, subscribe to us, leave us a review, do whatever that respective podcast like uh, app want you to do to show that you appreciate us right turn on post notifications as well so you know we're you know recording or when we're releasing i should say i think the fellowship first because they are books of pop cultures amazing patreon community it's a community that Achille and i biasly and objectively believe is the best in bookish communities you can join at patreon.com slash books of pop culture and saying this on the air i think Achille would agree with me um just if it, even if it's more sim to join now, we'll have something coming out this week. Yes, I promise you. Yes, this week. Yes, so we if you will. join we now, will. you'll get a bonus episode of BAPC this week. More than likely, it will come out Thursday, if not earlier. So, yeah, there's some yeah. incentive there by pledging five dollars a month. You support the most dynamic of duos in the bookish landscape. You receive access to multiple bonus episodes of BAPC every month. And you'll be able to provide feedback on new ideas and initiatives before we go live with them. And you get us one step closer to doing books or pop culture for a living. That's the most important reason to join, right? Is the because Achille and I, Achille and I are meant to make books or pop culture 24-7. Yes. Right. Well, maybe not 24-7. You know, you're a husband. I'm a boyfriend. You know, you're a father. Uh-huh. I'm a cat dad. So maybe not 24-7, yeah. but like. Mm-hmm. 40 plus hours a week right that's fair yes easy yeah, easy okay. yes. easy yes. easy yes. so you know that uh that's one that's the most important reason why you should join uh books about cultures patreon community um a dope thing that we do every month is discuss books as a community right so um today you know we're here to discuss a book but what's forthcoming is south to america by amani perry we will be discussing Literally. this as a community May 29th, 2022. Oh, you can't find it? Oh, okay. Yes. I, was like, I literally took it down today so I could be ready. Oh, is, there we go. South to America by Monty Perry, May 29th, 2022. Yes. And um, of course, when we discuss a new book, that's because we have one on deck. We always tell you two months in advance. or We always tell you, um, what am I trying to say here? We always let you know the next two books we will be discussing as a community, right? Um, Achille and I decided that on June 26th, 2022, our book of the month for June, the Re will be APC pick, is going to be All That She Carried by Taya Miles. Um, yes. Very, very excited to uh, to get into this. Achille, that is, how many nonfictions is that this year, man? Um, that? That's Wayward yep, Lives. Two, three. Yeah, That'd that's three. three. So we three, we three and three. So three fiction already because we got um, love songs, which we did to start the year. We did hell of a book, still recovering from that. Uh, <laughs> we did Wayward Lives, about to do the trees. Then yeah, then South to America and Tyus. So that's you know three nonfiction um, and three fiction, and all three of the nonfiction have come from you know uh, black women, amazing uh, black women. Um, yes. Yeah. Are they all? I know Taya and. And uh, Sadia are MacArthur geniuses. I'm not, is Amani? If Amani's not one, that's kind of weird, ain't it? 
It's coming. Yeah, right, that's probably coming yeah, though. Yeah, that, coming. that's gonna come. So yeah, <laughs> we probably are like we're on the right path. So yeah, mm-hmm. y'all make sure to uh get your copy of all that she carried, as well as the trees, as well as South to America, as well as anything that you're reading from um bookshop.org slash shop slash books of pop culture. Um, last but not least, um, follow us. Well, two things follow us on IG. Um, you can always find clips of the show um, that we're doing there um, and Books of Pop Culture. Also follow us on our individual pages, which you'll find on Books of Pop Culture. And this is the real last but not least. You can go to booksofpopculture.com to see anything and everything that is BAPC. So um, is there anything that I missed in the early housekeeping? Um, the the people do agree with me. My hair is very Bernie Mac-esque right now uh right. and you know you can only get it chopped up like that at we the best barbershop where me and reggie are partners uh and you can be we're a partner best. too uh if you you know put forth an investment the, the company is about to go public uh so we're looking at some people who are interested in ipos um sure. you know and uh i think that's what ipo means but even if it doesn't that's what it means now uh so go ahead and invest early mm-hmm. in yeah. early and often <laughs> Initial public offerings of mm-hmm. uh, We the Best coming to you. Soon. We the Best coming to you soon. Yeah, don't worry, I got you on IPO, brother. No, no worries. Okay, man. all right. Just so, making sure uh, we're where we need to be. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> yeah, man. We 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 always yeah. there for sure. So uh, the trees, man. That's what we're here to talk about. That's 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 what they say. That's why we're and here, I'm, man. And I'm looking, and I'm just thinking something before we go forward. Is this episode 21? Brian was episode 20, right? Yeah, this is episode 21. I think I got in my okay. notes here that it's uh that it is uh episode 20. Episode it's actually 20. 21. Yeah, okay, okay. we have episode 21 today. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Man. We yeah, can get ourselves yeah. a drink after this if we want to. Yeah, man. We we uh, are we are adults. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> man. Adults in the podcast land. Get out of here. Mm-hmm. Um, the trees, Percival Everett. Um what should we say about Percival Everett? Thankfully, man, he doesn't really say much about himself to put out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I have written here, right? I'll give y'all two bios since they're both short, right? So <laughs> one that I found online is Percival Everett is the author of more than 20 books. He is the recipient of the Hurston Wright Legacy Award and the Penn Center USA Award for Fiction. He teaches at the University of Southern California and lives mm-hmm. outside Los Angeles, right? That's one bio. And this no, other no. here in the back of the tree says, Percival Everett is a distinguished professor of English at the University of Southern California and the author of over 30 books, including I Am Not Sidney Poitier, uh, Erasure, or Erasure, depending on who you ask, and Telephone. And I want to read those and the other 20 or 30 or however many books um, this man has wrote after reading the trees. Um Speaking of the trees, information and accolades, um, what it came out September 21st, 2021, it's published by Grey Wolf Press, 308 pages. Um, uh, uh, what should I say about that? Like a hundred, was it 108 chapters, 107 chapters, something like that? Uh, Please yeah, yeah, check yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let me say that, that too 108, 108 chapters, 308 pages, 108, 108 chapters. chapters. Um, yeah. The review aggregate bookmarks dot reviews scored it a rave on their scale as it received 13 rave reviews, three positive reviews and one mixed review from various literary publications upon its release. Um, this book was long listed for the 2022 Penn Faulkner Award. It was shortlisted for the 2022 Penn Gene Stein Award. It was shortlisted for the Joyce Carol Oates Prize and it was a 2022 participant in the tournament of books, which I would like to talk about for a brief second, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trees was like a fan favorite in the tournament of books. People really enjoyed it, and people uh, not so secretly wanted to win. Even when, like, um, I had the piece where I did the commentary, they asked me, "Hey, is there anyone you like to see?" When I was like, "Yeah, the trees. Why not?" Right? Because Percival's been in it. I think this was like his third time being in the tournament books it was third or fourth right because i know i know he was in for telephone i know he was in for so much blue i yeah. can't remember if he was in for um percival everett by virgil russell 
right? But either way, he was in there, right? So um, the trees is running through it, right? It beats in, it wins in the first round. I forget who it was up against in the first round, but then it ends up beating Matrix, and it ends up beating Intimacies, right? But yeah. then it ends up going up against Claire and the Sun, and it loses. And mm. the people in the comments were like, mostly not with it. Because yeah. and it was a little bit because of the judgment, right? So the judge who judged the match, um, basically they said, Hey, at this particular day and like at this particular time when I'm reading, Claire and the Sun um appeals to me more essentially, right? And then the judge has said, if I had read Percival Everett or the trees, maybe like last year during like the uprising, maybe that would have like registered with me a little more at the time, right? So they were saying because of this moment, right? Claire and the Sun wins, and obviously that's not the entire judgment. Feel free to go to yeah, you know yeah, yeah. morningnews.org/tob. Uh, um, that way you can read the judgment yourself. Um, but that was like a little piece of it. So people were kind of like not really with it. Um, and I actually believe it or not, I've actually read both since, right? And um, if it was my call, I'd probably choose Therese. But hey, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's me. Is, is there a glaring difference between you and the person who chose who chose that one? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty wondering. sure. I never I never looked at uh I never looked up any photographs. Okay. All right. But all right, I, I would right. I would guess so though. You know yeah, saying? that's a I gotta read that. Like I said, of course we need to read the whole thing. That's an interesting yeah. perspective to take. And I mean, sounds like the person was being honest like about how they felt. Um, you know, so I definitely want to read the rest of that. And I need to read Claire and the Sun too. It's Claire and yeah. the Sun, right? Claire and the Sun, yes. Claire, Claire and, and the Sun's Sun. good too. Like now, yeah. don't don't get me wrong. I will I won't lie to you and say it's not good. It is a good novel. And yeah, you know, uh Kazuo Ishiguru is definitely like a dope author. Um, but I would in a matchup, right? I would uh-huh. choose the trees over Claire and the Sun. Who had the better writing? Um, probably Ishiguru's pen probably did a little more work. That's what I was wondering, but but that's right? purposeful, I think, in this text, which is something we're gonna get into later. But that's what I was wondering for sure. And it's like, like Everett is, I think Everett is one of those like he one of those players like to give a basketball analogy. He one of them players where it's like, okay, I'm on this. Like I even use KD right. Mm. KD is someone who always says, you know, I'm not really one who tries to go out and score 50, 60 points. It's not really my game. I try to just get all my points within the floor of the game. And you saw that Mm -hmm. beautifully when he was in Golden State. Right. So that's another way of saying he adapts to his environment because last year, you know, we, we see what's happening now with the Celtics and all that. But last year against the Bucks, he was going out and getting 50 because that's what they needed. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think Mm -hmm. Percival is probably like, KD in that sense where he writes his prose works with whatever story needs to be told for this yeah. story. He might not need to be all flowery or whatever the case may be. He just had to kind of be a straight shooter. Right. And there's, yeah. you know, the satirical, I'm sorry. I know I'm getting off on a tangent, but yeah, no, no, no. I think you're right. Um, that's something I was going to talk about, which I'm pretty much there, but when I got into like, uh, I think I guess overall high level thoughts. Um, after I finished it, I was like, "Let me go read what some other folks are saying," and and I wanted to find a way to nail down all my characters too. Um, but but I went through a few reviews, and um, they were talking about other works that he's done, and how this one differs in terms of the writing, and how they believe that, of course, was because of the type of book it is. You know, because yeah. he's done some literary gymnastics, I think, with Erasure, and there's another book where they said there's like. A book about I think it is a ratio that's about um like publishing uh and and how difficult it can be for uh people of color who are trying to you know write and there's like yeah. a book in the book um yeah that was pretty yeah 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 uh and of course we know telephone is what was it three separate endings or something like that but he's done some different type of literary gymnastics and so that was one thing they said like he purposefully kind of wrote down on this one so that it could do what it does. Uh, exactly. which we'll get into it yeah for sure for sure so yeah those are all the accolades on like the trees at least as of this recording 
Um, and yeah, now I mean we are, like you said, at overall high level thoughts. I mean, um, the the simple thought is, man, I mean, it's it's one one adjective I've been seeing people describe this book as it's a revenge fantasy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I think I think that that's part of it. <laughs> you yeah, know, um yeah. Well, you know. I, you, I I was wondering how this was gonna come off, but yeah. I thought it was fun. Really fun. And maybe it's because yeah. it is a revenge fantasy for me, I guess maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But it was fun. I was like, yo, this is this is it's going down, it's fun, you know, nuts everywhere. Um, you know, it's, it's <laughs> this book, book is definitely nutty. Yeah. A whole lot <laughs> it's like of it's a whole, a whole lot of but, nuts in this book. Yeah, that was one of the reviews. They were like, they were like, how is he making something so dark so much fun? You know? Uh mm-hmm. and yeah, like it was, you know, but I, I guess because we you know, you know what kind of universe you're in. Uh, and I think that uh, also I saw that Percival said, like, if he can make you believe that the universe exists, then he's got you. He's done what he's supposed to do. But something that yeah. I saw to him, saw him say, uh, which I think is not the same thing that our boy uh, that wrote um, the book. Uh, I took a picture of him the other day. Um, All uh, on Hager's. Edward P. Jones. Um, Edward P. Jones. That yeah. one of the same things. That's I think they that's literally the same sentence they both said. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah, which which I always kind of dig. Uh, that's mm-hmm. one high level thought. I think. Uh, would you call this a thriller? For sure, it it is. Yeah, it's like a lot of things, yeah. right? Like, yeah. it is. I could see, like, if you're a white reader, maybe it's like a horror story. But then, yeah. for like for black people, like you, like we said, it's the like revenge. a Tuesday. You yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and shout out to the um to the Asian Asian folk too, cause yeah, um, yeah, you know it, it's yeah. a revenge fantasy for them too. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um it's it's like I don't think it's historical fiction per se, um, mm-hmm. but I think it's definitely like historical and just yeah. like the legacy it wants to take on and just some of the, the stories that are told. Um, yeah. it, it's it's a mystery. It's a thriller, like you said. Suspense. Um, I guess by default, literary. I suppose because mm-hmm. you know, literary um allows you to bend the tropes that exist within genre fiction. Um, and like you said, it's it, it's entertaining. It's fun, man. It, it's one thing I used to try to do. Right, was like read a lot of debuts. And I kind of got away from that and I kind of just decided mm. like, okay, when it comes to certain authors, I'm going to read like the popular book or something, or I'm not going to wa- worry about order as much. Right. And with one thing I've learned kind of reading people's like four for fifth or whatever novel is like, wow, by the time they're like writing multiple novels, there's like this smooth flow that you don't yeah. get from a debut. And it's it's been very rewarding um, as, as a reader. Um, I, I don't think you're someone who's ever had th- that little um, niche where you're like, hey, like gay views and all that. Um, so you, you, you're probably used to reading like just these smooth books, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing I'm thinking, thinking about that you are kind of getting at, too, is that just because I guess we should have used a different word um, when we were talking about the writing at first, just because it is accessible doesn't mean that it isn't doing some literary work. Cause I think yeah. something you mentioned, the amount of chapters and, and the way that the chapters are done. I think that, um, that, that, that smoothness that's in there and the, the, the gripping nature of it that Raymond's kind of talk about with the addicting, uh, nature is in the the shortness and the brevity of some of those chapters. Uh, yeah. It's in the way that we don't necessarily get to get a great hold on characters because it's it's supposed to put a lot of the onus on the reader in terms of um in terms of like you making a decision as to what you kind of feel, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so yeah, yeah, I I. You know, I don't have, uh, I don't do those, uh, I don't think they're hangups. You know, I just don't have them in terms of those, uh, you know, like you said, the, the the thing about 
the debuts. Um, but it was smooth, you know, and I, and I wonder yeah. one book we, we've been mentioning, just tossing about, um, what's the, what's my man name? Um, underground railroad. Yeah. Uh, Colson. Yeah. Underground yeah, railroad, we, yeah. Harlem shuffle. Yeah. yeah. All that I, I, nickel. I want, yeah, I wonder if that smoothness would be there waiting on me with Harlem Shuffle, which I, of course I think it will be because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nickel was was a was a smooth, I don't know, just masterful type of thing, you know. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. like yo, low key, and I say this all the time. Nickel, Nickel Boy still offends me, like by how brilliant it was, uh-huh. and and it was uh-huh. and it was like slap you in the face, brilliant, like. Yeah. Hey, like, yeah. like the way, the way he just pulled that off, like, so, like that whole book is doing mm-hmm. work. Like, I'm, I'm talking the, the cover, like yeah. that entire book is like art, and, and, like, uh, Nickel is just one of those joints where, when we're like 70, 80, all that, like, I need the youngins coming up to be mm-hmm. reading that. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like for mm-hmm. real, yeah, for yeah. Real. But um, yeah, I, I'm loving the comments. We got uh, some folks say hilarious, almost too smart. Yeah, yeah, there's there's some mo, there's some parts in there. Um, and I had to Google this word, slapstick. Slapstick, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, there's some parts that are like Percival, Percival. Mm-hmm. The, the, some of them names, yeah, yeah, Hickory Spit, and you know, <laughs> but yeah, and 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 like Theo to Theo's point, um. Uh, he thought it was one of the best dialogue-driven novels, and I don't tend to love those outright. You know, I was thinking about Blacktop Wasteland um, and Razor oh, Bur- yeah. Razor Blade Tears in terms of 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 those of that comment while I was reading it. Yeah, yeah, man. That see, that makes me want to read those more, and yeah. we'll we'll definitely get to that part um, at the end, like what yeah. we feel like we want to read now. So um, I think the answer to this is yes, but I'll still ask it because we we do it. First time reading Percival, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, first time for me too. Definitely won't um, be the last. I'm, oh, far from it. Far yeah. from it. Uh, what work did the cover do? Well, no, no, I'm skipping. I'm skipping. You did physical, digital, audio. How'd you read it? Uh, both. Yeah. Got you. Physical, physical and audio. And audio. Yeah. Same. Yeah. My Oscillated fingerprints. Between the two. Yeah, my yeah, fingerprints yeah. all over this joint too. Same. Same Which joint. Which is interesting. Yes. Yeah, man. Uh, physical and audio. What work did the cover do for the story? Um, it it works very well for the story. Um, for those who have the cover, you see those names. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think that says it all. I think the cover is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. It's minimalistic, but um, very effective. Also, you said your fingerprints were on there, and you are a uh, black man, and I think my fingerprints are on here as well. Do you think when they run the DNA of the cover uh, that they will be able to pin anything on us specifically? uh, Because, you know, DNA played a role uh, in the story. Uh, But, yeah, definitely the cover is interesting in terms of that uh, because our museum does the same work uh, that's in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. It has these huge pillars with all the names of folks. Um, you know, that had uh, been lynched in Mississippi. Uh, and you just, you're like walking through the names. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, uh, I, I initially, at first glance, thought of it as trees, which I think um, is a thing too, you know? Mm-hmm. Like when I, I didn't look deep enough into it until I started reading to see what it really was. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mac covers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey I Theo, I you know, yeah, I I don't know. I kind of appreciate him a little bit just because it's like at least when I Sticky. when I read it, I can actually like show like, oh yeah, I actually done been through this joint. But then mm-hmm. it's also like, dang, I really liked it when it was new and like it didn't have all that, and you can't really wipe it off. Yeah, yeah I've tried. Just, it's a thing. It only gets yeah. worse when you wipe it off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just like and and so with the cover right now, I feel like we can probably get into just, you know, our discussion, right? That mm-hmm. cover is definitely, in my mind, I had that cover as the um, the scene where Damon uh, frees the names, as he as he was mm-hmm. saying, right? Um, and I, But I was thinking, though, with the cover, I was like, I wonder if people would look at those names and think they're erased, right? 
maybe they are right because because mm-hmm. that's what i thought about you know and and for those who read oh uh, well if you haven't read this is your spoiler alert i guess but um but stick around you, you stick around <laughs> you'll be all right, you'll be all right. <laughs> yeah don't worry about it um but i was thinking it was the names being freed mm-hmm. you know um yeah and i like that like once i got to that scene i was like oh it's the cover it's kind of mm-hmm. like how in long division when you read it and kiese describes the cover at least in the um in the in the new joint the no, 2021 bet, yeah. version yeah um and I, I felt the same thing when i was reading this i was like look at that cover you know yeah. um is that is that what you were thinking too yeah that and um it always also to damon's point feels like they get like sucked into one large event even when like i said when i was walking through the um the museum you know it's like one huge event and so yeah like freeing the names giving them some um giving them you know their space and if you look like closer if you ever get a chance to go through a museum that has that you know some of those some places some some of them have no name for instance at the top here unknown female yeah. um and you know you'll see that a lot when you're walking through that part of the museum um it'll just kind of describe the event you know so it's like one long um event that is uh, still ongoing as the trees kind of shows you know and yeah so, yeah mm-hmm. Be- because when you when you read the names even on the cover trayvon martin's name mm-hmm. is on the cover right it's mm-hmm. these these aren't just like the 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 graphic um well not to say that these modern day lynchings aren't graphic but the the graphic lynchings that you see where someone is hanging from a tree you know they uh through this work um, it's saying that the lynchings are still going on. Um, mm-hmm. It's just, it's kind of like how um, racism evolves, like the lynching uh, does as well. It doesn't look the same, but it's still the same, ultimately. Yeah, yeah. That's something else I appreciate about this book, too. Um, the, uh, you know, that it approaches the level of violence that some of those lynchings had, because sometimes I don't think people talk about that enough. Uh and every one of those scenes was very violent, right? Every one. Uh, and everyone in the community had to, like, bear witness, which is also a thing, you know, uh, that this story brings brings up, you know. Uh, look, look, yeah, this comment right here from uh, Shelly, mm-hmm. um, pull it up. I think Gertrude said in isolation, people don't look at it as a genocide. But when they're all together like that, you see the gravity of it. Exactly. Yep. Uh, everybody well, had Shelley. to bear witness. Yes, yes. Very well said, Shelly. Love and, that um, comment button. Yes, yes, I do too. I do too. Mm-hmm. And um, what what I was gonna say as well is, I um, I also think perhaps the names on the cover symbolize the rise. Hmm. Hmm. Yep. Yep. Right? Uh, 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 I see you. Yep. Right. Like in a way, I mm-hmm. think. Um. I think the cover symbolizes the rise thing. Thing. Um. That we see, especially uh, towards the end, we see it more and more as the book ends, which in, in my opinion as well, this book more so stops than it does ends. Because I don't think I don't think the world of the trees ended. I just think we stopped getting a camera into it. That universe yeah. is still flowing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So I know we got some some stuff here, man. We got some stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think I think what I'll do because because mine are a little more like I guess uh, from a sequential standpoint I think mm-hmm. they might work so I think okay. we'll start there and we'll work our way into yours right okay um so I want to talk about again these these uh these short chapters right mm-hmm. um 108 chapters in a 308 page book right um what was that experience like for you um interesting really good in terms of like if i was interviewing percival it would be really good because when you're because when i use the audio like i'm doing something right and it was Mm -hmm. easy to just go back to my notes and be like 79 you know right in the 79 this happened uh right at the beginning of 95 this happened you know Mm -hmm. um and it also does like you know it it made me very interested in uh detective novels um yeah. after this because i'm thinking about it had that you know that noise that 
and then the scene switches on one of them uh, on one of them mm. CSI show. What is that? That's Law and Order, ain't it? Yeah. Dun, 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 mm. And then uh-huh. it switches. And now they had a whole nother scene. <laughs> and that's all, all I was thinking about like that. And when you're looking at like some of those old documentaries of um they had that detective element and some of those old documentaries of things that happened in Mississippi during the civil rights era, where you'll see like you'll see people walking. And, and looking for something and then it switches very quickly to a whole nother scene. Now they're doing this protesting, et cetera. Um, and that's, that's one of the things, like I was saying earlier, you know, because when I'm thinking about writing chapters, I'm thinking that a scene is something that has to be built. It has to be long, not long, long, but you know what I mean? Like it, it has to be, uh, set up and then it has to go up and then it has to either like stay somewhere or come back down in my mind. Right. So as, as someone who wants to be a writer, I thought those short chapters were just so dope because it was so much done in some of those spaces. And the scene was so, so set by all the other chapters before it, you know, that there, there was no need for all of that. Um, mm-hmm. And that, that, that kind of is one of the elements of that smoothness that you were talking about. What, what are some of the things that that's doing for you? So for me, it made it, it made it very film like, and yeah. and uh, you know that I know at the end we tend to ask that question of what you would see, what you would like to see it adapted into, and I guess I'll kind of insert it here. We can maybe revisit it or not, mm-hmm. but I think you know if one were to you know take the trees and want to bring it to a medium, I think it lends itself easily to film. Yeah. Um, I think. It, it, it and it's it's so easy because you know with film they don't keep everything from the book right so it you it's so easy for you to decide okay what you're going to keep and what you're going to not right like it's yeah. all there for you the scenes are all there for you no waste here i love this work yes heather like and 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 from a uh you know from the film perspective again right the part that you want to consider waste is easy to just say like like when you're adapting and once again, I've never adapted anything. Right. So I'm not uh, purporting to be like a filmmaker of any sort, but mm-hmm. I yeah. imagine you could say like, Hey, like we don't, we don't need, and I'm just throwing a number out there. I'm not like actually saying it, but we don't need 50. We, like yeah. we cut out 50 through 60 or whatever, right. We're going to do everything else. Or, or even if you say, Hey, look, this book got 108 scenes. We're going to do about 55 of them. We're going to make a movie. Yeah. Right. Like that's the type of thing you would see um, in a film. And I think it just lends itself very easily to that. Um, And I think that's, that was really dope kind of reading it. Like, Oh wow. Like this is reading like a movie. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see it um, become like a movie or a series. Definitely. Um, Such a, I mean, I would love to see this done over a whole you know, like a what's the name of the thing where the guy used to come across and you have his shadow? Is it Hitchcock? Like you know, like a Twilight. Zone. I would love to see like a whole universe of this just yeah. occurring. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And if and if they were to do it like a, um, I guess like a series or something like that, I could imagine them expounding on like uh, Gertrude and them for sure, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like Gertrude, Chester, and all them, Mama Z. Yeah, yeah. If you're doing the series, you could do like a Mama Z episode where you kind of see her from like zero to 105, like mm-hmm. a quick little biography of her, right? Yeah. Like, like there's hell, even how like Jim and Ed and uh, what is it, Herberta, like how all them mm-hmm. uh became cops, yeah, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, or they could bring back True Detective Raymond, look at you, you get the billion dollar ideas. Mm-hmm. I like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. um Shelly says, and I'll put this up here too. Interesting. Um, the book emphasized the importance of names, but the chapters were numbered. I noticed a couple chapters were skipped, and I wonder, yeah, I noticed that too. I noticed that too. And I I because I have all the chapters written in my notes. I was like, man, there is not a, a chapter. What's the name? I'm about to find that. Cause I remember when I broke down the book, you know how I do with all the books when I get them. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Yo, a certain chapter is missing, uh, yeah. like seventy four, for example. There's no chapter seventy four. Interesting. Yeah, and I don't know what that's about. I don't know if that was like a mistake, cause that's like a lot of numbers. But there's like no chapter seventy four as an example. So 
that is a very good comment. Um, if I'm missing any other numbers and someone wants to point that out, feel free. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's um there's no chapter uh 74. And I I have no idea what that means. I oh, 74 and 104. Yeah. Okay. I don't I know what there, that means. I wonder if there's 74 names here uh on page. Or maybe it's uh 104 plus 74. What's that? Uh 178. Uh-huh. Maybe there's 178 somethings. Yeah, um, we need book. to know. We need to know. Uh Percival, if you if you ever see this, I'll give you my phone number. Just email us at books of pop culture uh at gmail.com. We want to know the significance, yes. brother. Absolutely. He probably won't tell us, but we we still would like you to call Reggie. Uh, yeah. so for, yes. for other reasons. <laughs> please, please do. Please yeah, yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. call me and talk to me, honestly. Like, yeah, tell, yeah. Tell me how your day went. I understand you, know? you enjoy fishing. We too. <laughs> yeah. like you know? uh, and I think you do like horseback riding or something. All like that. That. Are you All yeah, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll get out in the, in the, in the yard with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we'll we, do that. Yeah. We'll come out to California. We'll film it. Look. Mm-hmm. And you'll have us looking like jackasses. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, first of all. Give me a call, man. Give me a call. Books of pop culture at gmail.com. Yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, see, I I'm going on tangents all over the place, but it's good. It's good. It's necessary. So yeah. that was just a short chapter talk, right? So really, uh-huh. it's 106 chapters, 307 mm-hmm. pages, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to ask you this. Gotta mm-hmm. ask you this. Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hattiesburg being called the city. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want you, the Mississippi mm-hmm. native on the show, to just talk about the depiction of Hattiesburg, money, etc. At least from what you are able to speak to. I don't want to assume that because you're from Mississippi, you've been to money. You, you know, I know you mm-hmm. live in Hattiesburg, so I mean, mm-hmm. you know, there's that, but. Just talk about it, man. What did you what'd you think? Yeah, Percival, I'd like to talk specifically to you again because apparently you were here uh, and you never not once reached out. Um, you know, I actually uh, went to MBI headquarters, um, you know, looking for you. I was there at MBI headquarters uh, right where you said uh, Jim Davis and Ed Morgan sat at a conference table in a room with big windows. I actually took a picture of the room with big windows that you must have been in. There it is right there, Percival. Where were you? I was buying wings down the street and I didn't see you. Um, we're going to go down a little bit here. Uh, and you said they looked down a Confederate monument across the street next to the courthouse. I was there. There's the courthouse, Percival. You weren't there again. Here's a picture of the courthouse, Percival. Mm. I need answers. Um, and you then say, uh, look at this piece of shit. Looks like a big well penis percival i was there by the big well penis and you were not you were nowhere to be found i took a picture of me reading your book waiting on you percival wow right there on the confederate monument and you didn't show up so yeah being from hattiesburg uh and and well not from hattiesburg but in hattiesburg um in uh in mississippi i thought it was a uh very interesting and very specific what you about to say Yo, I really, I thought the NBI, I thought he made it up. <laughs> oh, shit. I am, I'm a little mind blown. Because I didn't Google it. I was like, oh, he yeah. playing wrong. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, yeah. So that's so. real. So you knew about it, like, even before reading? Well, hold on now. Show me. Okay. Put the link in the chat, man. Let me pull that up. Too. Oh, I yeah. Be sure. it's, um, it says dps.ms.gov. I'll, I'll type it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, yeah. But the way he talked about the NBI, what was it? what was the name of the NBI in the book? Hold on. Yeah, no, it was the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation, and the, even the even the mother. even the um, they were there was a scene where it was being made fun of. Yeah. Well, so what I was thinking, so there was a group that I knew of that uh was sent places to investigate things, but. I didn't know it was this group in particular. I was thinking it was another group, but it must have been this group, though. Um, so I knew about it, but I didn't know about it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 man. Percival did his homework uh, in yeah. terms of the way people in Mississippi view different cities. 
Yeah. Um, I think I've been through money, like kind of, you know, to get um, through to another city. Um, and that's definitely how uh, people are. Like, for instance, people know um, that, you know, uh, well, so you got Hattiesburg, right, which was named after a woman named Hattie, right? And you have Hattie, the receptionist. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the yeah, so uh, there's a lot of things that he, he did really, really right, which means that he must have been here. Um, the place that the courthouse is right there, and then you have the Confederate uh, monument that's right there, and then across, I believe, is now um like where a representative works and something like that but yeah that's i was like trees i gotta go take a picture about this because this is so funny that he really must have so, drove through here <laughs> so so is the is that like i guess the headquarter or whatever is that in hattiesburg well see i thought i think it was oh okay. right at, gotcha. at one point but what's across there now like i said i think it's like a representative is where the representative works out of gotcha but um yeah people think of Hattiesburg as the city i mean now people are probably more so thinking about jackson um but you have these cities that are very uh like like he said stuck in the 1960s um that are definitely money would be one of them um but yeah yeah it was it was really interesting to read uh and to hear Hattiesburg kind of cuz Hattiesburg is like a hub it's called the hub city so mm-hmm. people are always kind of like come here or go through here to get places it's like right in between it's like two hours from mobile two hours from jackson two hours from um you know new orleans and then like you go the other way and you can get to natchez you know uh, sure. so it was like always like this middle hub area uh and people would definitely either get sit from here or jackson to investigate something like that look at that man see and i you know i just thought because there was so much like joking just just being yeah. made right um especially with like the white characters in the book um so yeah. i just didn't know like which parts to take like i guess serious yeah or whatever um yeah and, you know the mbi was definitely one of them That's um, a thing. Yeah. and uh well, yeah at least it was one thing that was real mm-hmm. right yeah. and um in 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 speaking of his like depiction of of the white characters right one thing that Percival ever said was, you know, he was talking to, um, you know, his wife, Danzy Senna. For those who don't know, um, Percival Everett is married to Danzy Senna, who yes. is, you know, one of my favorite writers as well. Like she, um, Caucasia, right? The author of Caucasia, New People, um, mm-hmm. really dope author um, who who you should read as well. Um, she's she's also had other books too, but those are just the two I've read. Um, yeah. But. You know, he talked about how he spoke to her and he said, hey, I'm not being fair in this book. You know, uh, I, the, the white folk are definitely caricatures, they're stereotypes, whatever. And, you know, that's just how it has to be for this. Yeah. And, you know, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Worked. I mean, I think I think. I don't think he had to do that, though. I think that those mm-hmm. people definitely exist here. Right. They definitely, definitely exist here. Um, yeah. the reluctance of some of those characters to interact with the fact that, um, and we and we're gonna definitely get into that when we get into South to America. But the fact that we are all like, we basically cousins, you know, and you know, a couple of those characters find out that you know, you know, find out that they're black or are yeah. aware that they had blackness in them, and they were kind of like, you know, kind of like. Yeah, pretending like, but that's a thing down here. That's a, I I can take you, um, to one of those cities like that, and you are yeah. gonna meet people like that. I can take you right. Um, I mean, you can go right to Natchez, man. Right, <laughs> to Natchez, Brookhaven, and yeah. and meet those clan members that are. Oh uh, yeah, that's uh yeah, like that yeah. are that part there. Ain't true yeah yes um yeah. you know um shoot right up the, right up the road this way yeah. um and it that was something that was kind of interesting in terms of um in terms of seeing in the book because we i think sometimes people tend to think that they like don't still exist per se um, yeah, I don't know why you know and, I, and i'd be like nah they meet on tuesdays uh you know <laughs> and um and they yeah. and they still like are members of the society in the same way that they were. So you know, I, I 
uh, again, man, like like he said, if I can get you to believe that this universe exists, when my I can tell you this universe exists, I don't know about that one. Uh, I will have to see the whole the whole reasoning behind it. Uh, but and and even there are characters like these black characters too, right? Who have mm-hmm. bought into this idea of and this is something that I wanted to talk about too. But this idea of well, I'm in the I'm in the uh, I'm a member of the FBI because you know I don't want I don't want to um, have the white people be the only ones with a gun or I'm a member of, of this governmental agency because we need to have brothers and sisters like that who, um, you know, who are in those rooms. Right. When a lot of times when they're in those rooms, they aren't like bringing truth to power. Right. They're just agents that are kind of there and allowing um, these people to exist the same way they existed before. You know? Yeah. yeah it's um. so there's like so much of like current, pop culture that I thought about during this book for multiple reasons, right? And, and you're you're talking about one right now. So recently, mm-hmm. um, Atlanta, you know, Atlanta season three is back. And their yeah. most recent episode, White Fashion, mm-hmm. um, is something uh, that comes to mind when you talk about how certain people are just in rooms and they happen to be black, but they have a individualized agenda more so than a uh, a community wise agenda yeah um so it just so happens right like you know you you get in this room and now I'll, I'll bring it back to the book sure like you're a black cop and and maybe you know when you join you maybe are thinking like maybe like the black panthers where it's like you know what i'm gonna be the black person who polices the community Right. Because the Black Panthers always said we need black police in the Mm -hmm. community. Right. But then who's to say you're going to go to the community and be the ideal cop, the one who understands the community, the one who can talk somebody out of things or or maybe because you're in the community, you're going to get along with everybody. They're going to know not to cross you, whatever, whatever. Right. Who's to say you're not going to go in there and inflict the same violence as uh, as someone else. It's kind of like this this. So this other book. Uh, that I'm reading, it's called "Season of Migration to the North," right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's a story that takes place in um in in Africa and Sudan, right? And it's a it's an Arab African country, um, and I think that matters here too a little bit. And one thing that they talk about is how like you know the colonizers were here. Like there's a scene where one of the Sudanese individuals is speaking to um like a like a European individual. And the European individuals like, look, man, like we did our work because we still here, even though we're not here, because yeah. a lot of y'all are treating each other the way we treated y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you know what I'm saying? And that's the same thing that happens a lot of times when you get black people who join the forces. Right. Yeah. And obviously, you know, not all blah, blah, blah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, same thing, and same yeah. thing with the white folks, which yeah. may be more so why uh, he made that apology, you know, but yeah, you know. Hey, look, it 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 is because you know the one thing we don't we don't do that we don't generalize and all that shit. But that doesn't mean a large percentage of people don't participate in something. Um, mm-hmm. And ultimately, man, a lot of times, a lot of people, I don't know, I don't know a black person in my life, right, who sees police presence and feels safer as a result of it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and. As far as United States history goes and context goes, that means that the invention of the police is still working the way it was designed to work. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think that's uh, and and that that matters to the ability of this work to do what it does. Yeah. You know, because if that had a like, like, let's say they were just in there and they were really just wrecking stuff. You know, putting people in their place and da da That that breaks the uh, that breaks the you know, the stream of consciousness that he's saying he wants you to be in. Um, that doesn't happen in real life. And at least, you know, it doesn't happen in real life that we know of. And um, so it shouldn't kind of happen here. Um, yeah. You know, and and that is like like Elizabeth is saying, that's one of the beauties of that last of that final scene and a couple of those scenes, too. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm touching. I'm dancing on something I'm way on. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, yeah, yeah. I mean, because all, all my points, like I said, they're they're pretty like you know normal, whatever. I think mm-hmm. yours, you know, you have the the Achilles style questions, man. You mm-hmm. know, so 
we gonna yeah, we gonna get yeah. into them after this. But okay, okay. I wanted to talk about real life people being in the work, right? And the reason why uh-huh. this came to mind is because that's a controversial thing to do, ultimately. Yeah, um, yeah. it is. And and once again, I, I mentioned pop culture came to mind a lot. Another uh, TV show that came to my mind was Winning Time. Winning Time is um, the HBO drama slash comedy, uh, more so comedy that comes on um, every Sunday now um, it's in its first season. It's called Winning Time, The Rise of Lakers Dynasty. So in that series, you have real life people dead and alive who are depicted, such as, you know, Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, those they're alive for, if, just in case you didn't know yeah, uh, yeah dr yeah. jerry buss who is dead um you got michael cooper you got uh paul westhead i believe i don't think he's um actually I, i'm not sure because there's paul westhead and paul westfall i know one of them passed but um yeah there's there's a bunch of people who are like real or who were real who are depicted in the work one of them is jerry west too who's alive yeah alive yeah. to the point where he said he thinks that HBO and the showrunners owe him an apology for the way they depict him on the show, right? Yeah. Um, and, and Maddie Johnson's alive to the point where he has a documentary, I believe, that's out on Apple TV now, right? Mm-hmm. So there is some pushback that that show has received. Now, listen, the thing is, with me, I understand that sports facts are easily verified, right? So mm-hmm. I watch the show, and if I'm curious about something, I just look it up. And I'm like, oh, they're just doing entertainment right here. And I don't think it's a big deal, right? And I'm just like, hey, like, I love Magic Johnson. I just, you know, I've become a fan of HBO, like, getting into some of their shows now, like Euphoria, uh, Succession, uh, Winning Time, Insecure, whatever, right? Um, So I'm just a fan of their products. And if I think something's interesting and it happens to be on their network, I watch it. Um, But I sell this to say, in this work, Emmett Till, right? Carolyn Bryant, Donald Trump. We don't say Donald Trump's name, but Donald Trump in there, right? There's real life people in very serious, very, very serious uh, topics um, in here, right? And Mm -hmm. I just wonder, like, I just wonder how the families, especially particularly the, the Till family even, would mm-hmm. would feel about something like this, right? Would they would they say leave well enough alone, right? Like, you know, that's just something that came to mind for me, just seeing how um people react to their self being in a book, right? Um mm-hmm. so Elizabeth says, go for it, do it, and he did it well, right? Oh, go mm-hmm. for it if you can do it. Um, let me let me slow down. Go for it if you can do it well, and he did it well. Mm-hmm. Um, what what are you thinking, man? When it comes to like, because because ultimately, what what one could say, right, is, hey, you just fictionalized the name, then then now it's like, oh, it's inspired by this and it's safe, mm-hmm. right? Versus using the actual name, um, and also to go back to Atlanta, Atlanta has uh, episode one this season called Three Slaps, was a reinvention of a terrible uh, story. That took place in Atlanta, I believe, mm-hmm. in the Atlanta area, um, mm-hmm. with some um, some black children that were uh, murdered by two white women, right? But that was like mm-hmm. a revenge fantasy too, because the black kids in that episode survived. Yeah, um, yeah, man. What what are, what are your thoughts when I when I bring that up? Man, I was thinking about that the whole time. You know, um, um, I won't say this, but um. I was thinking about that the whole time, you know, yeah. until uh what's her name? Um until uh hot, Dixie, hot mama, mama, see, hot mama hot Yeller. Mama, until hot mama yeller, you know, which I think is what was uh, you know, those were kind of smart decisions. But I think I was wondering like what does that look like in terms of like yeah. legality in general? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. of course with the families, um, but legality in general, I wonder what do you do with that, you know, and I guess yeah. Uh, I think literature must exist in. I'm sure that um, knowing what I know now about that, you know, someone was probably checking that, you know. Uh, yeah. But also, just it's a, it's a that's a ticky thing. At least, at least I think it's ticky though. You know, someone yeah. that's written thirty books probably already knows, uh, and, you know, and, what you can and can't do. Exactly. Yeah. And um, Billy, Billy says, 
Yes, and, and fictionalizing. I'll make sure to put that mm -hmm. comment up too, uh, Billy. But I mm -hmm. feel like you have to be careful fictionalizing the living or the dead. Percival did it in a very respectful way. So I'm putting fictionalizing because Billy got that word right. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Y'all better remember, okay? Yeah, um, I think uh, Shelly got an interesting point too, you know, playing around with uh, old 45 or any of the you know, any of, of those folks' names is interesting, yeah. too. Uh, and he did that masterfully, though. I mean, it was like he consulted him. It was like, hey, yeah. hey, you know, hey, Donald, you know, what would you say? And Donald was like, of course I'd say the N-word and then say I didn't say it. Um, yeah. You know, it was yeah. masterful. But uh, yeah, that was really funny. Yeah, oh, my God. I can't wait to get out of here and play it for trees, man. Oh, my God. I've been talking to her about it all day. But um yeah, I wonder, and then I also I put in the chat. I mean, I wonder how we would feel if someone white did it, you know, um, and 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 made yeah. some of the same decisions. And you know, of course, there probably be an out, outrage. But I wonder, you know, how we grapple with that. It would be beautiful to see them like, like, yeah. you know, to see that um, kind of be broken apart by different people and them tell me how they feel. Um, I, you know, but once I saw what was kind of going on, um. I was with it. So I think I agree with yeah. kind of the, the fellowship here. Percival yeah. did a, a bang up job with it. Um, it works um, on, on a lot of levels, even the way that I'm assuming it was kind of happening. Yeah. Um, being from Mississippi, uh, uh, or maybe the, yeah, I'll say it now, but maybe it'll come up a little bit later when we get into it. But um, uh, our proximity to uh, voodoo, voodoo, and uh, hoodoo, yeah. uh, it was what, what it's called when, when attributed to Mississippi um yeah yeah i think you know it, it, it was a it was a work i i would only trust someone who's written 30 books with something like this you know <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure for sure and you know too that's going back to the adaption piece right maybe maybe that part is also something that gets changed mm -hmm. if, if they take this to film if or maybe that's the part where people are like uh maybe maybe we'll stay away from this for the film right mm -hmm. Now, Elizabeth so. said they probably wouldn't do it as well. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. In um, terms of if a white person did it, yeah. And mm -hmm. like I'm, you. Go ahead. you go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I'm sure it's out there. We probably just need to find it and then see, and we can make that decision. I'm sure it's out there because we like to act like a lot of this stuff is, you know, first time happening, but we know literature is huge. And so I'm sure it's happened. Someone's played around with uh, some, some historical characters uh, before, probably a lot of times. And this is just my first time interacting with it. Yeah, so there is a novel that comes to mind. I'm going to find it because I believe it won a Pulitzer in 67, I think. Mm. Um, I'm going to look it up And you right just now. randomly know that, huh? Hey, man, you know, I do my best, man. 68, actually. I was off by mm. year. The Confessions of Nat Turner by William Styron. Oh, William Styron. Yeah, I've heard of that, yes. William Styron is a white man who wrote a book from the perspective of Nat Turner and won a Pulitzer Prize for it in 1968. Imani might have mentioned it. And mm, Shelly says um, it gave can Candyman vibes, right? And it's interesting you mentioned Candyman because Candyman is a short story that was written by a white man. Um, mm. And Lovecraft Country, which so many people liked. I, I never, I only saw, I think, like the first two episodes. Lovecraft Country, which so many people liked on TV, was written by a white man, Matt Rupp. Mm-hmm. Right. So yep. I think it depends, man. I mean, you know, white folk can get away with telling, you know, black stories. I know they adapt them all the time because Mudbound, which came out on Netflix, was written by a white woman. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, and history you know, was written by a white man. So there you go. We were talking, <laughs> talking about that and where we're live. So for real, like that's that's yeah. relevant to this show. <laughs> so. This has nothing to do with anything, but I saw one of my friends say that their kid um, uh, was complaining about Candyman and the possibility of it being real. And she was like, don't believe everything you see on TV, to which the kid responded, well, mother, will you go in the bathroom and say his name to prove to me that it's not right? And the mother said, um, he played too much because mm -hmm. I ain't going in. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Hey, look, I ain't never done the little trick in the mirror neither. You know what I'm saying? That shit seemed a little, a little too real to quote uh, oh Raymond over gosh. here with that presidential statement. Yes, that presidential statement was perfect, man. Perfect. Man. 
But yeah, I mean, I but ultimately too, I agree with y'all, right? Like, I mean, I think he did well. I think it ultimately it was like it was just like um the Atlanta episode where I think it was a revenge fantasy, and mm. it's a way I, I think these revenge fantasies are ultimately paying tribute um as opposed to like being yeah. disrespectful right like yeah like we know about the situation where Lil Wayne um you know got uh caught out by the Teal family for a rhyme he made um in that future song I don't know if you remember uh Karate Chop mm-hmm. yeah. you know what I'm saying so that is like wild and disrespectful and all that versus mm-hmm. like you know um doing something like this where you are ultimately paying homage even in the the water dancer you got Harriet Tubman in there but it's ultimately paying homage to Harriet mm-hmm. Tubman with the superpowers um that that she had in the work that's also being made into a film by the way yeah the water dancer as if we didn't see that coming <laughs> definitely <laughs> did 100% did yeah yeah i think yeah. um yeah you know um that Wayne guy my god but um yeah um dang i was gonna say something about about something but it'll come back to me yeah man so we got uh we got these things i mean do you want to um do you want to read off i guess the question you think we've led into the most i mean i don't want to steal your shine here man because you you definitely wrote these out okay um let's see well, let's talk a little bit about what we were talking about earlier. I'm trying to find it. It's about uh, Damon. Um, yeah, here Uh-oh. we are. Um, what is being said about Mama Z's perspective when she talks about Damon's ability to write books without a shred of outrage as an academic? Uh, he responds with, um, he basically says like, oh, man, I didn't type it out in here. But Damon basically says that through uh academic and scholarly writing um and the and the you know how if you are a scholar they want you to be devoid of emotion that you'll shock someone into uh emotion and feeling right which ultimately Mm. we know that damon decides against um you know what do we think about that in terms of academic in terms of academics and and black people specifically in academia um when we're talking about like nonfiction works that we've read and then also to tie it back into what we were talking about earlier, what do we think about black folks um, in academia? But then also, like Mama Z said earlier about, um, uh, I think it's uh, Herberta being in the yeah. FBI. Um, yeah. You're from the FBI, Mama Z tells Herberta uh, when she questions her about the archives, and Herberta says, I'm also a black woman, to which Mama Z replies, so you see my problem. Yeah. Right? Oh, um, well, very yeah. well said. It's yeah. very well said, right? Because yeah. that, so once again, hey, I guess it's good I mentioned all these pop culture references since books mm-hmm. are uh, pop books culture, are. but Rush, yes. Rush Hour, right? So mm-hmm. in Rush Hour, there's this hilarious scene where uh, I forget who Chris Tucker, I think he's talking to um, one of, uh, one of, I think it's in the beginning of the film. He's talking mm-hmm. to just some dude doing some crime, whatever. And he said, he said that his mama tell people he a drug dealer. Because she's yeah. ashamed that he's a cop. Yeah. And that's yeah. a scene that is so funny to me because we really don't be with that shit, bro. Yeah. We really be like, we really, <laughs> parents really be feeling like they raise failures when they kid, especially black yeah. parents. Black, yeah. A lot of black parents feel like they failures to a degree if they raise a kid that joined the force. And, yeah. and yeah. it's just like, that was so funny to me that his mom, right? And I know... I know that's fiction and that's a movie, but I just mm-hmm. couldn't help but think like, yo, that's happened somewhere before where a parent, even if they're not saying that they child a drug dealer, they're telling their people that they child something else. Like, oh yeah. yeah, you know, my child work at Apple or something. You know, <laughs> like like just any mm-hmm. old shit. My uh yeah. my, my son, my son, uh he 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 work at the shoe store or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's what anyth- he do. Yeah. Anything but like he's a detective <laughs> and he's high ranking. At uh at the LAPD and he he busting niggas over the head like every week, you know like yeah. nobody want to hear that man. Nobody want to yeah. tell they people that and and I just thought Mama Z was profound there. Like it made all the sense to me. Like yeah, that's yeah. my problem. Like why are you FBI if you are a black woman? Don't you see? Don't you in, in her mind right? She didn't say it because Mama Z was very like I don't want to say obtuse, but she just was indirect, right? Yeah. It, it was like, um, what was it? 
I don't even know. I, I lost my damn train thought because I was reading your comment that you just typed in. But but Mama Z was thinking in her head like, "Yo, what's a war going on out there?" And you on the wrong yeah. side of it. And you on the wrong you, side. You on the wrong side of it. I can't tell you everything, but you are on the wrong side of it. Um, yes, yes. Elizabeth has another dope comment here. I think it's a fallacy mm-hmm. that you can ever truly separate outrage and emotion from scholarship and the law and truly achieve justice. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's nothing too. So check this, right? This is what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. I was wondering if that scene was commentary on this novel. This novel, that scene that you talked about, the, the outrage oh. in the 307 pages. Yeah. Because I was yeah. wondering if Mama Z, you know, through Mama Z was Percival Everett commenting, commenting on mm-hmm. the trees because the trees is 308 pages. Mm-hmm. Is there yeah. outrage in the trees? Come on now. That, come on now. And, right? and, and so, like, the question is, like, like what Elizabeth is saying, right? Like, uh, uh, I think it's a fallacy that you can never truly separate outrage and emotion from scholarship and the law and truly achieve justice, right? And I think, I think what scholarly work, for the most part, achieves is not that, right? Like, that's one of those fears of, of a black person going to academia. Like, you go into it with this idea of, I'm going to do the work of uh you know archiving of 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 writing you know books like you know these books that we're talking about that we're gonna be reading the next uh two months um and they don't yeah you know they 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 are amazing um i i think imani that's something that imani's doing that i think is interesting there's a there's more acknowledgement of of emotion in that book than i've seen in a lot of books like that um and i think imani probably has reached a, a place in academia where she can do that you know um, sure. But for the most part, when you read those books, you know, they hit you, you enjoy them and you get another one, but nothing actually occurs. Someone creates something in, in academia. And thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and then nothing actually occurs. And Damon is one of those types of people, you know. Um, and I I just think that, like, a lot of times what happens is like academia for the other for the other academics. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily something that actually changes the tide of, of the war. Right. Uh, and I think that's what Mama Z is fed up with, because Mama Z is an archivist too. She is, and that's it's it's important that you call her that the way you call her that, right? Because mm-hmm. some people would think she's like, uh, oh, oh, you know, she's doing it on her own. Like, you know, be careful mm-hmm. of that. But it's like, yeah. no, I I am writing down my life. This is mm-hmm. what I saw, right? And and are you talking about this response from Damon where he says, yeah. One hopes that dispassionate scientific work will generate proper outrage. Yeah, yeah, and that's so, just yeah, not true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> hmm, this is interesting because I might mm-hmm. I might disagree a little bit. Go ahead, go ahead. The only reason why I say that is, would you have you read the new Jim Crow? Hmm. New Jim Crow is that, passionate though. Yeah, that's passionate. But huh? but even even still though, is, is the prison industrial complex like broken down? Or there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like right. So I don't. So okay, here's the thing, right? Outrage to me is an emotion, not a result. Right. So what I mean by that mm-hmm. is, just because we feel something, don't mean that we about to break something down. Like like we're not we're not happy that. Like, okay, like, for example, right, books are pop culture, us airing this isn't Mm. necessarily making a new law go in place that's going to help black life get better, right? Just just Mm -hmm. on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is generating an emotion doesn't necessarily mean that you're generating the seven days. It just means that you're generating an emotion, right? And I think that so much of what people do goes for that as opposed to result and that could be that's something to dissect because maybe people should be going for results oriented action from their art versus like emotion oriented action from their art but i think damon what he said specifically i think might be a little correct right i think but i think he's i think he's correct in what you want like But he's not, but he's, but he, in terms of showing how he's incorrect, right? I think that's what you mean when you say proper outrage. 
We yeah. those other works generate outrage, but is it proper outrage or is it just uh, outrage proper. that's generally dismissed? You know what I mean? Like, because I feel Fair. like proper outrage would be something that has is is us being spurred to motion, right? It's like yeah. when we watch. I mean, we watch all of these movies. We watch. We read all of these books, and then, like I said, we're just on to the next one, right? Like, I one movie in particular is um, the one, um, uh, the Black Panther that shot like a bajillion times by the police. Um, Judas uh, and the Black Messiah. Uh, yeah, right. Fred Hampton. You know, pe- yeah. Mm-hmm. Black Twitter's outrage for two days. Uh, you know, and, and we and you know these people are still alive. It's just like in the trees; they're still alive. Yeah. Yeah, like the the, the the cop. Yeah, what Hickory? We, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like have we ever seen? I don't know. I've read a lot of nonfiction books, but ha, was Cointel Pro ever actually like done with? Not you know that what I mean? Like uh, you know, you know what I'm celebrated. <laughs> yeah. So I just think, I think, and that's and that's why I think Damon is there with Mama Z in the end. You yeah. know, because he's done. He's tried the other way, and I yeah. think. You know, another thing that you pointed out too, Mama Z is a living archive as well. Like she's yeah. an archivist and then she's what, 105? Yeah, for sure. So yeah. she's saw this and documented, right? As opposed to the work that academia generally does, is which uh like you know, like me, right? When I'm doing um when I'm doing research and I'm in the archives, I'm looking at what someone else was there for. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And yeah. then they wrote down for me to then be a scholar with. And yeah. so I think um, I think that makes her special, too. And that's something that I think people will try to dismiss. What you about to say? Mama Z is what maybe you would call a primary resource, mm-hmm. whereas academia mm-hmm. becomes a secondary, I suppose. Right. I think. Yeah. And I think this is important, too. Uh, that yeah. Shelly pointed out, I think it depends on the target audience. Uh, to a certain degree, people are dismissed when they're too emotional. You know. Yeah. And I hate that. Um, you know, that's something that I struggle with. Uh, and, and well, I struggled initially when I was working on my dissertation. Um, yeah. Coming from a literary background with the degree in literature to the social sciences, um, you know, I have to rip any sign of like me being alive uh, out of my writing, right? Um, in fact, one of the funny things that one of the professors mm-hmm. said is if I enjoy your dissertation, it's probably wrong. Like, like that you're supposed yeah. to be like bored and you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, uh, yeah. And that just, that bothers me at least in that specific area. Um, uh, but yeah, that's something important too. And I think, I wonder how true that is to literature too, with what Shelley's saying. Right. Cause there's, like you said, there's this commentary that's kind of going on between the actual book and the, the conversation. Um, yeah. because we are forced to kind of have like a, a, a more a more personal reckoning with it. Yeah. And then Raymond says Pro ended in 1971, but that doesn't mean the foundation of the agency wasn't transferred to other parts of the government, which is oh, exactly okay. what I think happened, Raymond. And and um what the 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 Black Klansman story, at least the movie mm-hmm. I think took place in like the eighties anyway. And mm-hmm. and you know there's there's if you ever want to see an opposing view of the Black Klansman, uh I would Google uh boots riley's commentary on it because he yeah. kind of did like this necessary but brutal brutally honest takedown of that film um yeah. but but yeah man it's just like that movie to me like that's that's what comes to mind when with that comment from raymond which i'll put on the screen for maybe those who are viewing now viewing mm-hmm. later or whatever um yeah so Pro ended in 1971 but that doesn't mean foundation of that agency wasn't transferred to other parts of government i mean and and uh what's the name? Uh Reverend uh Fondle is an example of that comment too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ultimately he's he's an agent of COINTELPRO essentially. I mean, I guess what this is more OG than even the COINTELPRO, the KKK, since that's what he was the what was it, the Klegal or whatever they call that mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, yeah. So I think it was the Klegal, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the COINTELPRO probably was inspired uh by the work their cousins over in the clan were doing. Yeah, and if you think about like the work that Cointel Pro did that we know about, um, and then the work that you're talking about that was happening in the '80s, and then the way that the government you uh, the way that the government follows and tracks people in various grassroots organizations today, um, yeah, they, yeah, 
<laughs> so you know, and uh, did did we did we take that down? Uh, is there something so. that we missed? Uh, okay, I think so. I think I want to. Um, I think that is a that is a very interesting thing. Um, the dialogue that we had about the academia piece, um, and, and the and and what Damon says in response to that, um, that I just yeah. think is just a dope. Uh, a dope place to kind of sit and that this novel brings up though, because again, uh, I think it definitely depends on the target audience and whether or not you view outrage and proper outrage in certain ways. You know what I mean? That was yeah. a really good little dialogue that I had. I love it. I get fun. Uh, that's the, gets the juices going. <laughs> yeah. I think we took it down. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what you want us to, to, to break down next, man? Like I said, I, I definitely don't want to steal thunder on these. Okay. Um, let's see. You know, I kind of wrote them with the with the hopes of uh, them being kind of open. So, what about this? Uh, I think this works. After I got done reading, I said to myself, "What the was that?" In a good way, kind of like I did uh, with Hell of a Book, where I was like, "Whew, it's a hell of a book." Um, so, uh, I went to read a few reviews as I said earlier, and it illuminated like more of my thoughts. One dope sentence that the new yorker wrote was that beneath his work's ever-changing surface lies an obsession with the instability of meaning and mm -hmm. with unpredictable shifts of identity mm -hmm. how do you think this places out how do you think this plays out in the novel and what does the instability of meaning and unpredictability um in terms of uh shifts in identity mean to you in general in america you know um huh. I, i'm gonna get a little literal with the unpredictable shifts in identity uh -huh. but it definitely makes me think of uh what happened to what uh what is it sheriff red jelly yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> like mm -hmm. look at you look at who you thought you was and look at who you are and 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 look at how like that whole scene where he finds out who he is that might have been that and then the Trump scene where he uh where he's saying the n-word all crazy, although he didn't say it. <laughs> those are probably the two funniest scenes in the book for me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Cause he because he's talking to uh to his wife and he's like, you know, yeah, she was white, she couldn't fall in love with a nigger. Yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. like, so what are you saying about your wife then? Cause now you know who you are. Huh? So it's it's I think um the unpredictable shifts in identity uh and then when and what else was said there uh, um so the first part is that he's addicted to where is it uh the instability of meaning right yeah 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 so yeah. Hmm, i don't even know how i don't even know where to begin with that um mm -hmm. you know obviously it's a good question because you wrote it but <laughs> where I, I really don't know where to begin with that with this book because um I feel like I guess the instability of meaning maybe comes and we, we kind of talked about this, but I guess with like the black cops, right? Yeah. Cause, cause they're in like these, uh, I guess in stable, I don't want to say unstable. It's definitely a stable situation for them, but they see how they are viewed ultimately by the community because for example, Gertrude knows to lie to the cops uh that night in the in the diner in the in the um what is it the blue the blue gum or the blue yeah yeah, yeah the blue gum um, i think so she, yeah she knows to say like oh I'm, I'm with mama z right now versus like saying oh i'm at the you know i'm at the spot you, you know what i'm saying and even how like the cops viewed it it was like yo something funny is going on right yeah that's how it was initially it wasn't like Oh, you know, our people is is you know they getting back or whatever. It was like, you know, we got a we got a country to protect, right? We got people to protect and serve, and it, and it's interesting. The I guess this is maybe the I guess unstable identity part, right? But mm -hmm. I, I always what I appreciated about this book was the irony of the fact that these black cops were assigned to protect and serve these white people from their people because i'm pretty sure there were other cops that work mm -hmm. at the mbi who could have gone down there i'm pretty sure there were other cops who worked at the fbi that could have gone down there mm -hmm. right but just mm -hmm. so happens black cops were assigned to 
you know, protect and serve these white people who were getting murdered. Apparently, what they were, they thought that it was like murder suicides, right? Until they realized, like, oh, these bodies are being placed beside them, right? Um, yeah, man, mm -hmm. I, I guess that's the thing that comes to mind when I think of your question is like that irony that existed throughout this entire work. Yeah, the for instance, like like you said, that there that there are actually these bodies being placed. It takes what uh, 149 pages before anyone even like because it's, so one of my other questions is about like the parallels let me see how i wrote word it is so we can kind of get into yeah. it too afterwards yeah. um whatever it does well in the novel is set up by binary parallels between the fear white folk have of black folk and how closely connected it is to the very fear they've hoped to instill and have instilled in all black folk and people of color throughout history through their violence right yeah. so there's Aside from the testicles in the hands of of the other of the other dead bodies that are there, there is low key no evidence that the dead body there right murdered the white bodies. It's just presumed that all of these black bodies want to murder these white bodies. Reason being, all of them are terrible white people, right? Yeah. And it takes 149 pages for, um, I believe this is Herberta, to literally, he says, I mean, she says, I want to inspect the scene and I want to see both bodies, Hines said. What good is that going to do, Jer Jetty X? Perhaps you're not acquainted with the idea of investigation, a nice, beautiful quip there, um, to a white, to a, you know, thought he was white. Um, <laughs> um, white a white uh, passing. Mm-hmm. But we observe and actively look for evidence. The sheriff said nothing. You can see the black man. We know who the victim is. I'm going to see them both. And isn't the black man a victim? Right? Like, mm -hmm. but no one even like thought about mm -hmm. that because obviously these folks want to kill these terrible uh, white folk. Right? Um, which I just thought was interesting, um, you know, in terms of that. Uh, in terms of the instability of meaning, right? Because yeah. what is a victim? Yeah. You know, what is a victim? Yeah. Right? Uh, and Elizabeth just put it in the chat, uh, the way the word victim was used at each crime scene. Yeah. What, like, like, what is a victim? What is uh, a policeman, right? What is a policeman to protect, which we've interrogated a lot of times, right? What is the meaning of protect and serve what and who? Mm -hmm. What is an American, right? Yeah. Which is something that that is at play here what is an american we know that all of us have to be hyphenated and so yeah. when 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 our when the president uh is talking about um is talking about the americans who love him and it's and then says i want my army here call my army here why is that uh like a like an uh, like an understood thing that they belong to a certain kind of american and that's what i think it's kind of at play there. Did you like you had yeah. some thoughts churning? No, nah, I mean, you was cooking. I was just kind of taking it in, man. And, and I like what you and Elizabeth here. Let me uh, I, don't, I think you might have put it on the screen. But yeah, like just this victim thing, because I'm what I was thinking. So what I was thinking to add to what you were saying in my head is how mm -hmm. the black bodies that were found next to the white bodies were also like, you know, mutilated, basically. Right. And yeah. even with that being the fact, you know, all these, you know, white people called the police were saying was, hey, I think, you know, and I'm just using the language of the book. I think the nigger killed him and then killed himself. Right. Mm -hmm. And it was like, let me tell you something like you think that dead black body ain't been dead. And that's the thing that the police kept saying, too. Oh, that I think that one's been dead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. versus like it didn't just die right now like i i can tell you right and we learned mm -hmm. clearly that they didn't i mean they were being preserved and used strategically um so yeah, yeah man i mean those are from that question which i hope i answered accurately um mm -hmm. those are like the thoughts that that came to my mind and, and i think you definitely did a great job of sharing your thoughts too what, are there any other parallels like that that kind of stick out to you? Because now, too, you know, what I'm thinking mm -hmm. about because once we find out, well, no, nah. well, I mean, well, because go ahead, go ahead. 
the the parallel between like I don't know if this is a parallel, but what's coming to mind again is that Mama Z and um and Damon scene where I'm thinking of like the 307 pages with no outrage. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like yeah, like the parallel there where it's like is the tree supposed to be a work of outrage or is the trees not supposed to be a work of outrage but we're supposed to question why it's not a work of outrage right because the trees was very like funny right Mm -hmm. but it was also like deadly serious like Mm -hmm. especially with the names right the nine pages of names from 185 to 194 yeah um so i i that scene is just very important to me with this book and the way it's making my mind work because because it because then i even think of damon's response is this proper outrage is proper does proper outrage include this much humor or is proper outrage more serious is proper outrage even fiction would proper outrage be non-fiction right like there's i really think that the the tension that exists between those two comments and this book itself is just uh just an interesting and pleasantly uncomfortable place for me to live in. And and so let me see here. Should I get to this one? But 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 okay, so and on the flip side, I'm thinking about what you said, right? Which yeah. low key, the work that was devoid of emotion is why we're here in the first place, because Mama Z was doing the archives work, Damon was doing the archives work, and then someone was was like thrown into action. And they only responsible for a certain amount of those deaths, but they occur everywhere. Started a little revolution. Started the rise. So, so both, you know what I'm saying? Both, of the, like you said, the tension that comes from those, that little piece of dialogue is, it's a lot to, it's like you said, it's a pleasantly interesting place to be in, you know, because, and then there's this talk of like, how academics don't get their hands dirty too, to a certain extent. Um, and I think, I feel like that that's one reason Damon is there. Right. Yeah. Um, gets this call. Um, oh, and, and he got a lot of dirt on his hands. You know what I mean? I think that's a thing too. It's just a oh. really interesting place to be at. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm thinking about that. Uh, like you said, the parallels between that conversation, this book, um and, and Damon's work, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I, it's uh, it's it's good, it's good stuff there, man. That's good mm-hmm. stuff. What Let's uh, see. what you what yeah, what you got for us next, man? You got these All good right, questions, so. see? Yeah. So who? In in knowing and knowing what we know. Uh, and I think that there were 16 others, right? That were helping yeah. to pull us off. Mm-hmm. Who who might be who might these other 16 be? Like, do we hmm. like who I, else is involved? Man, I got a I got a <laughs> I got a funny answer here. Okay. It might be the descendants of the seven days. Listen, look, hey, hey, listen, I'm I'm like, I'm might Yo. be the, the seven days, man. You know, because it, it, like, uh, look, y'all. So I, I won't get into like full details, okay. just because y'all should read the work and be amazed. Um, mm-hmm. so one book that this book should make you want to read is called Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison. Mm-hmm. I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Um, I will also say too. When you think about that in terms of Mississippi, uh, when you said they could be the descendants of the seven days, I was just like, yo, Natchez, you know, because I, I think I told you about this, but Natchez had the uh, Deacons of Defense, Deacons for Defense and Justice, mm-hmm. uh, the militant group that basically told the KKK, every time you kill one of us, we'll kill two of you. Um, and um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Um, surely, because Percival seems to be kind of aware of everything. Uh, yeah. In terms of just the layout and and the, the and the thought process of what kind of occurs here, surely that kind of 
um, played a role too. And, and the other thing about them, about the Natchez Deacons for Defense and Justice, is the namelessness. Um, you know, the, those other six people aren't named. These people, you low key still don't know who were members of it, right? Because it was a there was a level of um, a fear attributed to the fact that the Klan was alive and well. Same mm-hmm. as here in this story, to where you can't necessarily just be out all willy nilly talking about it, um, right? You think Mama Z knew? Do you think Mama Z playing like she don't know who else involved around the nation? Yeah, somebody got a because that was a map. He, yeah, I mean it was a map, and and Mama Z talked about the beginning how yo I'm 105 years old I know everything, <laughs> so why wouldn't she know that? She of yeah. course she she know everything so she know I ain't about to tell no cop mm-hmm. all this shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? She like said that, she said that from the beginning. She don't play around with with them folks. <laughs> yeah, well, Mama, Mama Z, <laughs> what Mama Z talking about? I'm old, you know. I don't remember what, what mm-hmm. she said when the accent was Ger- yeah. Gertrude. <laughs> yeah, she yeah she knew she knew when to switch it up and when to be. She knew what she could and she couldn't say. Man, come on, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, Mama Z knew about the whole thing. Like yeah. she she done. Yeah, I I, I have. Mama Z, I wouldn't be surprised if Mama Z was kind of like an omniscient narrator of the shit for real. <laughs> Where like, like she she basically like wrote the story and it just played out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And Heather's Coy is her middle name. Uh Billy says Mama Z knew the game. Come on, man. <laughs> knew it. Knew the game. Yeah, man. Started the game. Molded I'm by it. Up. Yes. <laughs> Yes, Mama Z is like y'all. Y'all know the uh, the 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 puppet master, all that. Yeah, yeah. So so let me tell let me say something too that I alluded to earlier that I was just thinking about until we got uh you know until we got deeper into what actually was occurring. I was yeah. thinking about y'all know how they make zombies, right? Where they get the they use like the puffer puffer fish extract. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, and these dead bodies are like animated. That's what I thought was going on at first. I was like, "Oh, Percival, you, I, you getting into it? You know, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, that's what I thought was going down. I was like, "Yo, Percival, mm-hmm. who you been there and talking to, man? You been on them back on them gravel roads, huh? Mm-hmm. Been on, been on them gravel roads, huh, Percival? You went on that pavement, you on that gravel? You went back, you know." <laughs> You done went yeah. back and talked to, to my, my great grandma, you know, uh, if there's any family <laughs> on here. You done went and talked to uh, Mama Maddie. You know, yeah. you you talk, you you talking to Mama Z, but you went and talked to Mama Maddie. And so I thought that's what you had going on, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, that was what I was talking about earlier. Um, that I was that I was uh thinking that might be going on. And I still was thinking it's going on all over the nation that Mama Z, you know, got to got with all the other mamas. All over the nation, mm-hmm. and they've been, you know, getting it in for real. And I, you know, that's still, I don't know, Percival did such a good job of like leaving that element hanging in the air, too. Um, because you know, Damon's in there, and she like, should I tell him to stop? Like, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like, why, why, why she gotta tell him to stop? Because he sure yeah. wasn't saying that. No, he just over that one. I just, yeah. this what I saw. He, yeah, he's just typing because, because, <laughs> because she got to him, too. Like, she know what to say, and mm-hmm. he he know how he know what side of war he's supposed to be on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's all that was. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's I guess it's on me again to kind of throw this out here. Let me. So then, and we kind of just talked about it a little bit. Is there is there a resolution? Do you think anything is ever actually solved? Uh, because by the end of the book, you know, we see Damon there. Uh, and thrown with the work that Mama Z does, which in and of itself is something worth breaking down. And then she asks, should she, you know, stop? Should should she tell him to stop? Um, what do you kind of think about that part before we look at the other one? Sure. Um, no, nah, like I was saying, man, I just think I just think we just um, I just think we stopped. I think our camera was shut off. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? This book is still going. The stuff is still happening. I think if anything, I can almost see this being like Infinity War type shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like it, it's just it's going down till it till it can't go down no more. You know? Yeah. Um, that that's what I got from this story. This story easily had like more pages that could have been included, more chapters that could have been included, but 
Everett just, I guess, at some point was like, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I'm going to stop right here. You know, um, Marlon James, I always give him credit for this because where I learned it from. Some books in other stop. He said mm. that a brief history of seven killings stopped. Yeah. Right. The tree stopped. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it, it was a really good book. I think we kind of touched on this one. Uh, we talked, we did that one here. We just talked mm-hmm. about that. I feel like, I feel like, I, and let me, to, for me to answer it, I mean, I feel the same way. I feel like the tree stopped. Uh, I feel like, and 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 if y'all are in the you know the fellowship wants to kind of respond to this too, I feel like there's this uh, there's this point where um I think this is Jim that's in there with Gertrude in there in the freezer, uh where Jim <laughs> is more interested in of course Gertie, uh but also <laughs> but also like this whole see it throughness that don't got nothing to do with being a member of the MBI. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, uh, and he, you know, he is ready to see what's really going on. And when they get to see him, to see him, what's really going on, I think that they don't say they they don't decide to stop, uh, even though, right, what's happening is not necessarily the solution, if that makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but it feels good, right, to Mama yeah. Z to to you know it feels good to these policemen who have been walking around uh and and taking all of this everybody pretending like they had to uh, they uh the in oh my bad the person you know like to deal with the microaggressions really macroaggressions all day every day while doing this while working on this case Mm -hmm. um i think they all just want to want to release they all just want to rise right yeah. Uh, like you said, uh, what, what we got here from from Raymond? Uh-huh. I, I like how Raymond uh-huh. connected that, right? Because uh-huh. earlier, earlier in the episode, I talked about the writing and the erasing of names, right? Mm-hmm. But I didn't mention Damon's PhD, which mm-hmm. Raymond's mentioning right here. Raymond says Damon's PhD was in cellular regeneration. He mentioned mm-hmm. writing, erasing the names, was setting them free, right? Mm-hmm. Them being the lynching victims. Mm -hmm. um thus regenerating the cells i suppose um from dr raymond that is i Mm -hmm. think it's important that you know that's dr raymond williams of the nerdy circle one half come on nerdy circle with uh with honore jeffers man y'all make Mm -hmm. sure y'all check that out because dr raymond is uh is is clearly doctoring right now okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah man so I, i i like how you connected that and to be honest right just to talk about Damon a little further, one thing that was interesting to me, and this was to me, I know Percival Everett would uh, probably not appreciate this, but I, I'll mention two things that I thought were a little autobiographical, right? Mm-hmm. So one was the appearance of people like uh, uh, what Red Jetty or Red Jedi or whatever, right? <laughs> um, and then um, same thing with, with Chester. Same thing with Gertrude, right? Where all of mm-hmm. them look white, but they're black, right? Yeah. Just like yeah. how, you know, Danzy Senna is a biracial woman, but mm-hmm. if you saw her, you probably would just think she's a white woman, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I thought yeah. that was a little autobiographical. And I mm-hmm. also wondered about Damon, right? Where his PhD and all stuff is like scientific and psychological, but they always managed to place him in the ethnic slash like racial part, right? Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, Erasure, which is one of the books you mentioned, is, you know, Everett basically saying that the black writer won't explode until they start talking about race. Because the writer in that book who ends up writing the book within the book doesn't mm-hmm. want to do all that. Like, he wants yeah. to write about, like, some other stuff. Like, like I think he wants to write about, like, Shakespeare or something. Just, you know, yeah. whatever, right? And, and Matt Johnson... Um, Matt Johnson actually has a book coming out called Invisible Things, but he wrote this other book called Pym. And the protagonist of his book wants to write about Edgar Allan Poe, but his mm. academic institution that he works for wants him to write about African American literature. So, yeah. you know, I think that I think those uh potential inspired by autobiographical tidbits were uh 
a little interesting along with I'm going to throw those in that box with the 308 uh 307 page comment with no outrage. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, think that, I think that's it for the cuz we did we talked about um the black the black uh beside every dead white person there's a black person who was mutilated uh mm. similarly uh let's see we scratched that and we talked about the black folks um uh, oh, being the, the cops. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got hey, well, so we did the questions. I guess we got to mm -hmm. get into a little bit of character the, analysis oh, then with the awards. Let's huh? go. Let's go. This is going to uh -huh. be interesting as always. <laughs> so, so as y'all know, our awards, we get five awards too. Mm -hmm. Our read would be a PC picks that are equally inspired by literature and by sports, particularly uh basketball right so mm -hmm. this ultimately is an excuse to do a small bit of a uh, character analysis so yes, yes. um the king akusa award for best coach so for this award we want to think of the character who was the best leader and or facilitator in the tree so the uh the the names that we have listed here we have Gertrude slash Dixie. We have Mama Z. We have Herberta Hine. And we have Jetty or Jedi or whatever that's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me, it's kind of easy. I think it's got to be Mama Z. I don't think it it's got to really be good. Mama Z. I mean, um, now, Gertie's good. Gertie's uh, dope, man. Gertie's really dope. I like Gertie. Yeah, Gertie's good. Because um, Gertie's like COO. Like, like, yeah. like, like Mama Z's like CEO, Gertie like COO, right? Yeah. Like they both needed each other, like for real, for real, for real. Yeah. Cause I, I feel like Gertie's like 007 too. Cause you know, yeah. Gertie is Dixie is, oh, you black? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm black. You, you know, know like, man. you know, they like, yeah. Um, let me see. We I just got to shout out Gertie, man. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause like, yeah. cause yo, cause. You know what I was wondering too? Let me this is a good time for me to say this. Uh-huh. She used to let all the white people eat the chili. So I was wondering if they put something in the chili. Cause she did not let she ain't let none, she didn't even let the black cops eat the chili. So I was wondering, like, yo, is this chili gonna come back and bite somebody? It didn't from from what I recall, I don't think it really did, but I was waiting for something to happen with those people who ate that chili, and nothing ever did. Or rather, nothing has happened yet. That's why the book stopped. You know, because maybe See? the chili, because they all were kind of a little disoriented when the when the when the murders occur. Yeah. You know, like they're in like this weird dreamlike state, you know. So, you know, you know, Bruh. yeah, Gertie, Gertie in there doing some work. But again, I just feel like Mom, Mama Z, the it it, it would have went on if Gertie was there or not, type thing with Mama Z. Oh, for sure. You know. For sure. For but sure, Curtis that was definitely runner up. That was like you know how people say, "Yo, I wrote all my books so I could write this book." Mm -hmm. Like this was like Mama Z's magnum opus. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I mean, she 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 got to be the best coach. But I, I like that we gave tribute to to uh, to Gertie slash mm -hmm. Dixie slash you know all that. Yeah. So, Mama Z, King of Kusa Award goes to you. And low key, I'm not going to lie, low key, King of Kusa, you got some competition. This might end up being the Mama Z Award one of these Mama days. Z. Mama Z was one of the yes. best coaches, man. So, yes, yes. The Parnell Award for Best Scene Stealer. So, think of the character that was the sixth man of the year, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, as in someone who maybe didn't spend that much time on the page. Yeah. But when they were on the page, they made the most of it. Um, so some of the nominees we have Wesley Snipes, no relation, and white, mm -hmm. Ho Chi and Min, mm -hmm. Ditka, no relation to coach Mike Ditka, um, mm -hmm. who, who's a Super Bowl winning football coach. Uh, the names from pages 185 to 194, mm -hmm. <laughs> the president, mm -hmm. Hickory Spit, the name Hot Mama Yeller. Hot <laughs> Right, <laughs> yeah, the word we grow, mm -hmm. and then the 28 Chinese murderers in Wyoming. This is a loaded category, mm -hmm. but um, 
I, I think we might have a winner here too. I might be surprised if we if we don't agree here. It, it's got to be the president, right? The president was uh, really big. Um, I feel like I have a three way where I'm trying to decide between okay. the president, let's, hot let's, hot mama yeller, the name hot mama yeller, the name hot mama yeller did a lot and, of work, and the Chinese murderers. Yo, I did not see them coming. I just was like. Ah, it was 28 know. of them, and they was in Wyoming. It's out there with Kanye. <laughs> they there they with probably Yeezy. knew Kanye. Yeezy told them to come. You Yo, know, like Yeezy. did Yeezy join the right side of the war? Listen, and he I, recruited some Chinese folk with him. Listen, ah, mm? but man, that presidential speech. I think I think the that presidential the, speech, but it looks like the community like Hot Mama Yeller, commu- man. Hot Mama Yeller, Hot. <laughs> Uh, and then when they were on the when they was on the CB radio, uh, psh, psh, this is hot, Mama Yeller. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Like, oh my god, man! Why? Why? So, and you know why? Yeah, you know, because she was secretly. But, but see, here's what I'm gonna say. Oh yeah, I mean, hot Mama Yeller was hot Mama mm-hmm. Yeller to a couple mm-hmm. of them Yellers. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna say this though. I think Hot Mama Yella might have spent too much time on the page to qualify for this award. I ain't going to lie. That's my only thing with Hot Mama Yella, y'all. I'm sorry. I think she might be a little bit more than a six man. Hot Mama Yella was like kind of like a starter. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and six man might not be the best way. I might have to reconfigure that. I don't know. Like, I mean, that keeps the, that keeps the, it, it's the checks and boundaries yeah. though. It allow it allows us. Cause, to, to snatch Hot Mama Yeller back. Because that's the only thing, right? Because I'm not going to lie. Hot Mama Yeller is funny. <laughs> and if this episode wasn't going to be titled The Trees, because we've got to know we're talking about The Trees, I would <laughs> I would 100% title this episode Hot Mama Yeller. And we might have to say it. We might have to mm. find a way to say it during one of our other episodes so we can name episode Oh, Hot my Mama God. Yeller. Look at Laura with the last minute <laughs> insert. <laughs> If we can't oh, have Mama Yeller, Mama Yeller then we surely must have Hot Mama Yeller's pimple. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, oh Mama my Yeller's god. pimple. Mm. Oh my god! Yeah, I'm Is like it? Raymond the pimple. Man. Oh man, man. yo, uh, yo. Thank That's... Laura. I think you. I think you did a good. That what is that? The writing ballot. I think you got uh, one. I think you got one there, Laura. That's a right in ballot, there man. <laughs> if there ever was one, <laughs> surely. Look at the chat. The chat is going yeah. up. Like <laughs> Hot Mama Yellow's Pimple has won the six man. Yeah. Uh, or the Parnell Award for best. Oh scene my stealing. God. Why? Go. Why? What is the purpose of that pimple? Why? What does I it, don't that know. has <laughs> Percival? That has nothing to do with. <laughs> Yeah, uh, hi, Mama let, Yellow's pimple. Let me. I'm on a pay tribute. We paid a little bit of tribute to the Chinese murderers, man. They, mm-hmm. yo, shout out to y'all, man. Y'all was doing great work out there in Wyoming, right? <laughs> but I, I want to pay tribute to this word we grow, okay? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I've only heard of Wigger. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. was my first time seeing we grow. First time as well, and I laughed out loud when I saw yeah. we grow. Yeah, I was man. like, we grow, and I've heard of Oreo too, obviously, not even because the book, mm-hmm. but I actually heard the term Oreo before I even knew a book named Oreo existed. Like I knew the term Oreo, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. which is actually the opposite of we grow, I suppose. But um it turns out homeboy wasn't even a we grow because he actually was black. Chester was black too, just like uh mm-hmm. Gertrude. Mm-hmm. So yeah. But I just wanted to wow, pay tribute man. to that. Is there any other things we need to pay t- pay tribute to? That I was the main. I just can't get that pimple out of my mind now. Yeah. Hey. It wasn't supposed to ever leave our mind, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Camilla Treadway Award for Best Defensive Player. So, think of the character. Other than institutions, because if we thought institutions, the police win every book that best prevents others from reaching their goals in the trees. So we have Gertrude slash Dixie. We have the Chinese murderers. We have the Blue Gum crew. We have But I'll Be Back. We'll all be back. 
black boy from pages 280 to 281 and i gotta write in mama z here right Mm -hmm. gotta write in mama z because mama z was doing everything on the court right but i'm actually for me i want the defensive player of the year to be the boy from pages 280 to 281 who said but i'll be back we'll all be back when um i think it was hickory spit was describing his, mm-hmm. uh, his his grandfather or something like that doing a lynching mm-hmm. and they were really having a tough time with that boy and before he died and he also said i'm gonna die for now yeah so back then he died and was still playing defense because he said we all gonna be back so he really low-key even more possibly even more than mama z I might have should have nominated him for six man, but we already uh gave that our, our Parnell. We already gave that yeah. to my uh to to Hot Mama Yeller's pimple. But yeah, I'm I want I want him to win defensive player of the year or the uh the Camilla Treadway Sheffield Award. I didn't have time to check it, but I think too um uh, fellowship, correct me if I'm wrong, there's either some lore that um that one of the reasons that Emmett was not allowed to live is that there's this point eventually where Emmett is like, you know, stands up to him or something like that uh, that's out there. I don't know if it was put out there by um put out there by um the actual murderers during the trial or if it's just something that just floats around. Um or if it was in like one of those uh one of those fictionalized um re- retellings of that story um but yeah i think that's who that gotta go to because i think even if even if there's some truth to um even if there's some truth to the fact that this is not you know some some work of like actual zombies right Mm -hmm. uh in in this in this city um how is this happening in these other places you know what i mean yeah um and, and then how do you have this Chinese element? And then you get to talking about what the Native Americans, what the indigenous folk are calling the people who are doing this work, who are mm-hmm. showing up in these places. And then, you know, there's these scenes where people are showing up. Like, they're like 20 dusty, dirty black men show up. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, like I said, you know, personally, you're on them, personally, you're on them rocky roads. You know what I'm saying? Um so I'm rocking with I'm rocking with my with Black Boy from 280 to 281. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. So the Paul D Award for Most Improved Player. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Gertrude slash Dixie, Damon Thruff, Red Jetty slash Red Jedi, and Jim, specifically his scene with Gertrude. Um for me, I want to humorously give this to Red Jetty <laughs> because of just how yeah. uncomfortable and disturbed he was when he found out he was black. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had to be serious, gotta give it to Damon, huh? Gotta give it to Damon because yeah. Damon, um, his whole academic practice and just the whole way he's going to go about his work and the work that's going to be created as a byproduct of going down to Mississippi yeah. is, is enough to, to like his next book going to be the one, his next book going to mm-hmm. get Pulitzer's. We'll it's have, gonna, pro- yeah. mm-hmm. you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, his next yeah. book going to win national books, Critics circle awards. We're going to be reporting it on books of pop culture. Like, Oh, the most recent prize winner, the most recent person to beat Lauren Groff. It's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Lauren Groff did just win the Joyce Carol O's prize though. So shout out to her. Yeah. She wow. did win the Joyce So Matrix did win something. Okay. Wow. Yep. It just so, goes to show, man. You just got to keep on showing up. Just got to keep on showing up, Laura. They 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 watching <laughs> over here at the Joyce yeah. Carol Oats, man. They yeah. they know they know that we was Lauren, yeah. we was we was gonna call out. We was gonna be just like Jim and Ed mm-hmm. for you, Laura. Okay. We were getting <laughs> fed up. We ain't read the book yet, but the, we the, know. The MBI was going to send Achille and I to mm-hmm. the literary establishment to protect Laura Groff. We were going to catch them in there fake reading all them books. And we was going we was gonna to need some evidence that y'all read 377,000 books before you Lord. made this decision. Lord, man. So we're we going to give Damon Thruff 
the Paul D award for most mm-hmm. improved player. Now I think Paul D would be proud. Paul D would definitely be proud because I could definitely see like how Damon gonna like be mm-hmm. walking, doing like how you was doing your real. After he mm-hmm. write that book, he gonna get he gonna have a new <laughs> swag and all that. Oh, the would have walk away <laughs> for sure, for sure, man. Yeah, so yeah. let's see, we got the Uncle Root the Uncle Award Root. for most valuable player. So think of the character thing you will always think of. When you think of the trees, we got Gertrude Dixie again. We got mm-hmm. Mama Z. We got mm-hmm. the the. Well, I'm gonna skip this one because we wrote it a little bit better. Mm-hmm. The names from 185 to 194. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna throw in. I'm gonna write in right now. Black boy um, mm-hmm. from page 180 to 181. Percival Everett. Mm-hmm. Uh, the not Mama Z, but the Mama Z archive project. Mm. And then we have white testicles and black brown hands. Mm-hmm. And we yep, also yep. have the bodies that the those bodies. hands belong to. Mm-hmm. Um, when I think of the trees, I'm not going to lie. I think I'm going to think of Percival Everett. I think that might be a oh, choice. But I thought yeah. you were going to think about those white testicles. I th- in black and brown hands. I am going to think of that, right? But I'm actually going to think of Percival Everett, man. Mm-hmm. As I'm looking at those names and I'm processing it, mm-hmm. I think Percival is the Uncle Root winner here for me. Um, and 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 I think I think it's because of the discomfort that exists when you think of some of the thoughts that this that this book is is like trying to put in your head right um i think i'm going to think of him in terms of how many genres exist within this world um i think i'm going to think of him because i want to read like all 20 of them books (laughs) white (laughs) testicles and black brown hands but see that's that's to me that is his imagination that's like, and I know all of this could be uh, associated with his imagination, everything, right? What if I was to tell you that it was common practice in Mississippi for people who were the lynchers to bottle up the testicles of the people they lynched and keep them till this day? Wow. Yeah. That's why I was, I was like, yo, you know, that's that, next level. I was yeah, glad that next happened level. every time because I'm going to tell like I said, I have been at one of those, um, one of those, uh, what do we call them? One of those workshops, history workshops. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the lunch dissolves to one of the last lynchings in Mississippi. And one of the historians there says, I know this guy who is still at large, Mm -hmm. right? Who has those balls in his office. That's some sick shit, man. That's that, some that, sick shit. Listen, so you know we, you know, uh, you know, like I said, this book tolls the line between just like this. That's why I think that that is happening at every one of those murders because that was a common practice here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That that and uh, people would like cut off parts of cut off parts of the people when they would come. They mm-hmm. would cut off parts and take it home for a souvenir. Yeah. Um, and so that was that was big for me. But again, I mean, for Percival to do the work of yeah, of pulling that out, that uh they keep the guns that because what another common practice was uh after the lynching was done to shoot the body, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know, we you know, like I said, that is that was very big for me knowing that that happened at each one of those because that happened at almost every one of these. When you, like I said, when you see those names, um, yeah. it, it was it's a reason Percival makes that choice to make them that gruesome every time. Um, mm-hmm. Very rarely was it as cut and dry as I think as I think movies and documentaries try to make it, where you know someone's hung, they move on. Someone's uh, set on fire, they move on. No, that stuff was mailed to family members. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, I, yeah Billy pulled it up too. But again, so, I think I, I think ultimately though, again, Percival did that work uh, uh, of uncovering that. But uh, I think we got to do kind of like the same thing. Uh, pay homage to why that, why those, why that had to happen. 
and yeah. one of those scenes. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna roll with you, man. I mean that 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 takes it up to another level. I'm telling you, know, you I was out. like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it was hard to hold that in all the way to the end because when you asked about what it means you've been from Mississippi, knowing that and knowing that that's not as big a thing, people don't. I mean, like I said, you just don't hear about it. Yeah. But it was a thing, and these people are still here. Like they still yeah. here. Like my brand. There's a senator. I think his name is Senator Bilbo who mm. was like a terrible human being. Uh, yeah. He was a senator. I think he ended up being a governor. He was, I think, for a small time president. You had have to double check all those. But his grandson was my branch manager. Mm. Like he, the, it, you wow. know, these folks are still here, yeah. uh, still in control. Uh, just, I guess you'd say sanitized, but, you know, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, hey, I think it's got to go to black and brown bodies with white testicles in their hand, man. I mean, I, I think I think Percival would appreciate that, too. I think he would rather they get the MVP than him. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. And and uh, an extra kudos for them being ripped off in some cases that looked yeah. like they were literally ripped off. Seems like sometimes they were smushed, too, because them hands mm-hmm. was bloody as hell. Mm-hmm. Like, they, like no. they took them in the hands and went. So, <laughs> yeah, man. Well, you the noise, it? dog. The noise. You... It's, I know. I wonder what they sound that. <laughs> Yo, yeah. now nah, and there's the one scene. Who was it? Was it? We saw one of them people get murdered. Wasn't it Fondle? Yeah, we saw Fondle mm-hmm. get murdered. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he he even had like a little quote that he said beforehand too. Yeah, yeah man. Nah, <laughs> I can't that shit was read that. That shit was funny, man. Yeah, so, yeah. man, okay. So now we 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 didn't give we didn't gave all the awards. Um, mm-hmm. we talked about um the the adaptation part. You were saying I know yeah. what that you would you would like it to be more like a series or something like that, right? And I know for me, I was thinking a movie. I think I yeah. think they could definitely do it in like a movie. And when I say series, like I'm thinking, I want to see this done with other cases. I want to see this done with. Uh, with what happened with Mike Brown, you know, I want to mm. see this done where uh, there's a whole lot, there's a whole plethora of of uh, of scholarly work done on how uh, correctional officers are killing uh, inmates and making it look like suicide, right? Mm. In 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 prison cells, I want to see this same work done with that in another way you know what i'm saying like so you you come like uh, like maybe all the prisoners are doing this in reverse to the um uh, to the uh correction officers you know what i'm saying or yeah. uh you know it's just just to see this done there's so many cool ways this could be done and so many other things to bring light to you know things that people don't generally know about you and, know and, and you know what too i'm thinking this right like because sometimes what happens too is a book will come out and a movie will come out mm-hmm. and they'll both kind of be like unique in their own way. Mm-hmm. But it like, like for example, how we had Chris stuck on and how yeah. he got the story like no Negro, but then get out also came out and he mm-hmm. said, yo, I've been working on the story for years. And, and yeah. I think if anything, he finished like no Negro before get out even came out. But those mm-hmm. stories happen to have like such similarities, right? Yeah. 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 So, and I say that to say, perhaps somebody is already writing this film, you know, with like this revenge fantasy in mind. But the catch with that is this. The films that tend to get greenlit are the films where black people are oppressed. Mm-hmm. The, te- the films that don't seem to get written as much is the ones where the black people have successful revolts. Yeah. So. Yeah. And yeah. and that's just something that people should think about. Yeah. And, and I'll even say this. This successful revolt came out from an independent publisher, too. Yeah. I'm going to throw that out there. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, man, I just... I, I think I think this is the next thing we're gonna kind of get into, but I gotta read more Percival. 
Oh, for sure. Uh, for sure. Even if I got to. Um, but yeah. if we are headed into this point of uh point of uh, let me see. Oh, um, no, no, no. So Theo, I'm not saying that it did get option. I mean, are you telling are me you, did? I was Theo? saying that I was hoping you were saying that. Yeah, because I was saying that I think it would work very well for a film. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it lends itself very easily to that medium more mm-hmm. than any other medium. Um, but I haven't seen anything. Um, I haven't seen that any of his books actually are, are going yeah. to film. So um, I, I didn't. What I don't mean to do is say that it happened because I, I didn't see mm-hmm. that it happened. Yeah. Uh, are we on. We're on the. Yeah. Uh, what books do we want to read now that we've read the trees? Yeah. I want to reread. I want to reread Chester Himes. If you hollers, let him go because that was like oh. mentioned in concert. Yeah. Uh, with uh, this work and some of the some of the write ups I read about it, and then um, and I want to go read Chester Himes' detective works that come out after that. Um, you know, because of what we were talking about or earlier in terms of the chapters, mm-hmm. um, and of course I want to read his wife. I got Danzy Senna's work, um, which you've been telling me to read. I think Caucasian for a while. Yeah. Um, and uh, Erasure and Telephone. You know, because I want to see. The like I said, what two two or three of those reviews were talking about how he generally does like the literary gymnastics that uh people come uh to see the experimental work and we know telephones experimental, etc. Uh that and that uh what is it? I am not S- Sydney Portier. Uh uh-huh. that's the one the one another one I want to read. Yes. Um yeah, um because this was yeah, this was a fun I've been reading some fun books lately. This was a <laughs> You know, and it never somebody said something earlier about this, uh, you know, that even though the book's comical, uh, surely the mo- the film would have like a s- more serious tone. You know, and I don't think it ever really lost the seriousness in the book either. It's just like, um, you know, it was just a, a excellently written, a smooth read, yeah. like you said, Reggie. <laughs> hey, man, it's mm-hmm. it's these once they get into once you get into like plural novel land. Like mm-hmm. we've done this plenty of times, it, it just read different, man. And it's mm-hmm. it's kind of cool. Um, so for me, right, the ones that I want that I feel influenced to read, uh, most personal ever novels. I, I say most because although I think I would read all, uh, you know, I I don't know how long I got to live, so <laughs> <laughs> so I say I say that's why I say most. Like you know, hopefully I'll be able to get them yeah. all, but I put most. Um, mm-hmm. The sellout, man. This. In hell of a book, both have made me want to read the sellout and just, you know, that's a book that I always say kicked my ass the first time around, man. I wasn't ready. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I thought I could kind of just like play around with the sellout, and Paul Betty was like, "No, you can't fuck with me. You need to give me your undivided, right?" And I always hear how even that's such a good like book club book too. So it's something that maybe we even bring, you know, for uh, an eventual month one time. You know, there's so many. Yeah books out there so you know we and we are always talking about them y'all y'all should just seen the conversation we had to get to tie you right yeah, so yeah, um yeah. so yeah. by all means trust me y'all we are we're going through a lot of books to narrow it down to one um yeah walter mosley just because um the mystery element right yeah, um yeah you know made me want to read some of his work i'm a write in right now s.a cosby because you mentioned him earlier mm-hmm. i'm yeah. also write in attica lock um who who's done good work in the mystery field and the um, last one that you got there too yes uh, yeah i'm a, i'm gonna do that one the only i'm gonna name one more book so i'm gonna retweet one of yours because you mentioned uh-huh. chester himes detective novels right i'm going to write in this book called 40 acres i know a lot of people in the fellowship are probably familiar with 40 acres by Dwayne alexander smith and that's like mm-hmm. another revenge fantasy in a way uh too and then um mama day y'all know mama day is inspired by mama z and mama day is also um the like because i've been reading gloria naylor in chronological right i actually end up taking 2021 off from gloria naylor unfortunately but 2019 i read women of brewster place 2020 i read Lyndon hills so mama day would be my next nailer so Mama Day is the nailer that I want to read even more now that um I've come I've encountered Mama Z. And I would be curious to see 
if Mama Z and Mama Day have like a lot of commonality. Yeah. I I had started Mama Day and I stopped so I could finish the um what was it the the widow book I was reading by uh uh pray song for the widow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh and you were saying that I was like, Yay, now I can read Mama Day because I'm not gonna read in sequential order like you told me to. Um <laughs> I mean, <laughs> with with I Naylor, was, it actually is rewarding. I know you had it, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. But Man, I think I'm gonna just, your thing. yeah. <laughs> uh, definitely your said, thing, I was like, though. I sure did stop reading uh, Mama Day. Well, here go. You said I gotta read this first, right? Yeah, cause see what Naylor does, and this ain't like no big spoiler, but yeah, if yeah, you yeah. read them in order, you'll see like she, what she always does is she'll well of course in brewster play she can't mention a book that came before it because there's no book that came before that Mm -hmm. but she leads you to linden hills and in linden hills brewster place gets mentioned and she leads you to mama day right Mm -hmm. so it's just kind of cool to like see that but of course like if you read it out of order it ain't like you ain't like you're not gonna understand mama day but i just always try to give people the full experience yeah 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 mama yeah, I'm gonna probably <laughs> read Mama <laughs> Definitely, man. And I don't blame you. Because you'll still get the references when you get them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Ain't yeah, about yeah. shit. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> did we uh did, is there any other thing we should we should say before we go? Did we miss anything? Um you know, shout out to those um to the Chinese uh that were doing the work in Wyoming. Yeah. Uh yeah, show them we appreciate them. Uh, you know, stepping up and uh, aiding and assisting us in the endeavor. Hi, uh, Mama Yeller. Hi, Mama Yeller on on the CB radio. Uh, yeah, man. Um, really, really a uh, fun book, man. I had a good time. Yeah. Jim, Ed, Herbie, mm-hmm. all yep. y'all, man. It was good. The nice introduction to uh, the MBI. To the... Yeah. Yes, which is a real thing, y'all. Mm-hmm. Don't get mm-hmm. on their bad side now. Come on now. You know, but um, <laughs> yeah, man, definitely looking forward to more Everett in the future, and, and hopefully more Everett right here on a um on a Sunday. You know, we break where we break it down. So um, if that's all we got, man, he's a killing Missouri. I'm a Reggie Bailey. Well, um, I'm a, I'm a shout out to Patreon again because we will be putting out an episode this week. If you're not there, join the Patreon episodes are really fun. Y'all got to kick it with us and make sure y'all watch the last one because, um, you know, I was down in New Orleans, Achilles and I met, and I and that's like me archiving my history. Come on, man, talking about being down there, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, that's dope, and um, and soon, so next Sunday, we may we may air, um, just putting this out there, we um, we are going to have uh, I don't have the book near me. We're going to have Chantal Johnson on who wrote Post Traumatic. It's going to be Wednesday. It was going to be Sunday, May 1st. We had to reschedule. It's going to be Wednesday, May 4th. So y'all make sure to come back um, and check that out. We're going to be discussing Post Traumatic with her May 4th. Um, So that's going to be fun. And, you know, maybe we'll do an episode next Sunday, too. Kelly and I will talk. And if we do, we will let you know or we'll just put it out because maybe we pre-record it. Who knows? Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, y'all make sure y'all are right here. May 4th, post-traumatic, BAPC. Y'all know what it is. Yeah. Take care, y'all. Peace.